Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited. Welcome to episode 177 of the Highly Relevant Podcast, a show about how Latino pop culture is reshaping mainstream entertainment. In this week's episode, I welcome singer-actor Julio Iglesias Jr., who celebrated his 50th birthday with a new big band album titled Under the Covers Out Now, his first musical project in 15 years. In this candid conversation, he opens up to me about why he took a long hiatus for music, why he didn't follow the trend of doing reggaeton, why he always felt comfortable embracing his father's music, and I ask him how he culturally identifies, Hispanic, Spaniard, or Latino. You'll be surprised at his unexpected answer. But before I talk to Julio Iglesias Jr., it's time I give you my weekly recap of the top Latino pop culture headlines in a segment I like to call Jacked In, now powered by showbizcafe.com. Let's begin with the top movie TV music news of the week. Selena Gomez is the most followed person on earth with 391 million followers on Instagram. Jenna Ortega to star in the new film based on an original idea from The Weeknd. Pedro Pascal's premiere of The Mandalorian Season 3 is out now. Diego Calva and Sasha Calle, the new Supergirl, joined the cast of the drama film On Swift Horses about chasing the American dream in California. Tessa Thompson reveals she wants to direct, and the 2023 Latin Grammys will leave Las Vegas and go to Sevilla, España. And in tech and social media news, TikTok puts 60-minute time limits for teens on app. Spotify is introducing a new plus button to replace its heart icon. Instagram and Facebook are rolling out a new paid verification subscription service for users. YouTube will focus on podcasts and AI this year. And Snapchat has launched an AI chatbot powered by OpenAI. This is my first time interviewing Julio Iglesias Jr. professionally. He and I had crossed paths in the aughts at people in Espanol parties, Miami parties, and award shows, but we never really had a chance to get to know each other, until now. In this interview, we're going to dive into his musical career and how he's navigated the music industry's streaming era as an artist. We're also going to discuss his father Julio Sr., his superstar brother Enrique, and how he defines himself in terms of race, culture, and identity. We begin our conversation with why he took such a long break from music and what made him come back to it. Jack, it's funny, but after my record in 2003, which was Tercera Dimension, my Spanish rock record in 2003, yeah. which is actually, it's still, it's, that record is still in my heart. For me, it's one of the best records I've ever done. Yes, no it doubt. is. It is. No doubt. I love that record. I it's love that record. Great album. In Spanish. After that, in 2000, that was 2003 and four. In 2008, I I did a all cover record, but it was like a quickie kind of a record in Spain. It was called Porcos. I, I had spent a lot of time in Spain working, and I was doing a lot of TV. I was doing I was doing a lot of ad campaigns. And record company asked me to do a record, and I said, "Okay, yeah, huh. let's do a record." I got together with uh, Alejo Steven, who from the group Tequila in the 80s, and we did a record. In two weeks. Wow. Obviously. Yeah, it was crazy. I remember going to the studio, recording the whole record in a week. And then obviously, that's why the record sounds as it sounds. It's not my favorite. It's definitely not my favorite. There were a couple of nice songs in that record. But honestly, it was, it was when you do a record in two weeks, it's impossible to do something special. Wow. I, that's what I believe. That record, for me... It doesn't even count. You put an it asterisk on it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even count. It was in Spanish. It was the Spanish record, cover songs. It was Cindy Lauper song, Time After Time. You know, it's really crazy. I've been touring every single year, doing shows all over the world up to that record. I barely ever sang one song from that record. Get out of here. I swear to God, I would sing 
any other song from Tercera Dimension. I would sing a lot of my father's songs, which I love. I still love. And that's one of my favorite things to do. Sing a lot of my dad's songs when I go on. I do private shows and when I do concerts. Right. And I, if I sang one song out of that record, it would be the way I want to. I think I would sing that song because they would ask me for it during a show. But that's the only song that I recall singing live from that record. Sounds like it left a bad taste in your mouth. It did, because you can't do a record in two weeks. You just can't do a record in two weeks. It's impossible. I listen to the production. I listen to the way my vocals sound. And it just doesn't, there's nothing special about it. It just, and it's honestly, whose fault is this? My fault for agreeing to doing a record in two weeks. You can't do a record in two weeks. It's impossible. Then after that, I don't know if you know about this, but I got contacted by a French record company and they asked me to be part of a, it was like a French project man band called Latin Lover. Yes, I just saw this in my research and I think you guys did La Camisa Negra, no? We did La Camisa Negra. We did a Boulet Femme in French. My, Which my your dad, father did as well. Yes, exactly. So we did Boulet Femme. And that was a lot of, that was actually a really fun project because we toured all over France. We, we did a lot of private shows all over Europe. And that was kind of a fun project. That lasted... Two years, because between recording the record in Paris and going up promotional tour with the guys and then touring with the guys all over Europe, that was kind of a fun project. And there was a bunch of great songs in that record. It was Latin Lovers. And the first single was uh, Buena Farm, then Camisa yeah. Negra, second single. We did two great videos. It was a fun project. It was fun. So then you guys ended it. And did you not want to do more music? I guess we, each one of us went our own independent ways. I kind of, from 2000, that kind of ended 2015, 16. I went on tour with my dad. I went on tour with my dad. I did a bunch of shows with my dad. I started touring with him. And then I started recording. I did like a little record on my own with my dad's songs, with four or five songs of my dad. Yeah. Then I, then Mark Oswald was my manager and we sat down here in Miami. We started talking about what I wanted to do. That's when I told him about the idea that I had of doing a big band record with a great producer. And that's forever. And this I mean it from the heart. I'm turning 50 in five days, four days. So I was thinking, I'm already 48 years old. I'm thinking what I want to do, what I want to take my music to. And I said, I would love to do a big band record uh, with all these great songs, maybe even add some of my mm. dad's songs. Cause because for this, because for this record, I could have done some of my dad's songs, but then Rudy Perez, my producer, said to me, "We could do a whole record, volume two, three, four, and five of just some of the dad songs. We could do so many songs." But now was when Jack. Now was when I really found what I really love: this type of me, this type of songs. Maybe even write our own our own songs. So it's very interesting you say this because the last album you really put out as a solo was 15 years ago. You're now turning 50. Yes. The soundtrack of American Latino youth or even American Latino culture and even global to a certain extent is reggaeton. Yeah. So what's interesting to me is you decide to come back with a new album and you not only defy the trend of singing reggaeton or urban music to stay relevant with the sound as an artist and i'm sure record labels have pressured you to sing some sort of reggaeton stuff instead of the classic so it's music from the past in english as opposed to music from now in spanish what inspired you to go in a different way defying the trends of today you know what? I didn't even I didn't even think about it because I've never really followed the trend. If you think about it, in two thousand and three, when I did my Spanish rock record, yeah, ahead I, of its I, time. Yeah, it was like I was doing Matchbox Twenty, Third Eye Blind, <laughs> that, that type of stuff in Spanish. And I know we had La Ley, we had Mana. I know we had a couple of a, a couple of rock bands in Spanish, but I don't really believe anybody had that that American real American sound like I did in my record. Because if those songs were saying in English, they could totally work. 
Y es que son sus ojos negros que me hacen temblar Noche sin final Now what you just asked me about the big band I don't really think about it anymore I just, like you said, I'm going to turn 50 years old I don't follow no trend, I do what I love I do what I think What I enjoy because I know I'm gonna have to sing those songs live. I know I'm gonna have to sing those songs at the awards. I know I'm gonna have to sing those when I go on tour. So I only want to sing what I love, you know. That's so I, awesome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll go to a party and I listen to I listen to some reggaeton songs, and hey, it makes me want to dance. I can listen to it and I enjoy it. But for me to sing, this is what I love. It's funny. I've asked Juanes. I've asked Simena Sariñeña the same question about artists like Juanes. You're going to tell me that your record label didn't tell you, hey, Juanes, it uh, looks like your radio airplay is declining. Your album sales are declining. And everybody loves reggaeton. Even your kids love reggaeton. You're going to have to put out a reggaeton album or a reggaeton duet with somebody with like Rake has been doing this a lot. Yeah. Their sound has become a lot more urban than the poppy ballad innocent youthful sounds of before yeah. and so this pressure has never pursued you julio i just feel I, like I, not now that you say this i've never I've, first of all when i finished my spanish record 2003 i got dropped from warner and it's now when actually i believe it or not look i just signed with william morris i just signed with my record with my new record company which is one rpm And they love what I'm doing. I've never been opposed by no by an urban guy asking me to sing with them. So I'm just being honest with you. I've never had that. I, I admire Juanes because, wow, I love his music. I've always loved his music. I've always been a big fan. And it is incredible because his sound hasn't really changed. It's the same yeah. Sound, <laughs> same sound You're right. He's had, he's had forever and loves that. I love that about him. And I respect that very much. Now, don't get me wrong. Look at my brother. It works for him. It totally works. She gets That's together right. with this guy, with the other guy. People, lo que sea, you know, and it's a hit, he, right? And he le funciona, and it works. It works for him. So he's blessed with that. It's perfect. So uh, I guess it's just a vibe thing where it works for some people, it does it for others. But yeah, I would hate for the record company to force me to do something that I didn't want to do. You know? Julio, I wanted to ask you, now that you talked about your brother's gift of being able to, to do herb and so forth, For so long, Enrique was out on tour and doing press, a lot of, and I would want to say mainstream media, really clung onto this, the family doesn't like each other. And here you are singing your father's songs. Here you're covering your father's songs. Here you're touring with your dad. There was an article recently that's been going around a little viral that you and your girlfriend listened to your father's songs when you're getting into the mood and so forth. Why is it that you are so comfortable with embracing your family where there's been other moments where the press and the media have really tried to create a different narrative? Why have you embraced it? I completely understand the fact that when my brother started singing, first of all, my father, I grew up listening to my father's music. I grew up going to his shows, watching him live, memorizing all the lyrics. I guess I am a true fan of my dad's music. I just am. I just really love it. I just listen to my father's music and I just melt. I think his voice, the way he interprets the songs, there's something super special about it. So everybody's different. I don't see my brother singing my dad's song. I just don't see it. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. I see myself doing that type of music, doing those songs because I guess I guess I love them more. I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet I've got no rhythm. Though it's easy to pretend. I know you're not a fool. I should have known better than this. The culture's crazy right now. There's been so much talk after George Floyd's death, Black Lives yeah. Matter about race yeah. in America, something that even yeah. us Latinos didn't even have to deal with until Lee Manuel Miranda came out within the Heights and the backlash of the colorism kicked in. So now all yeah. of a sudden, not only are blacks and whites looking at their race wars, but now us within the Latinos are looking at ourselves for yeah. colorism and all this other stuff. How do you identify Julio? Do you identify as a Hispanic, as a European Spaniard? Or do you identify as a Latino 
in the United States? I am very confused. First of all, first of all, I think the whole racism thing, it's so pathetic and it's so disgusting. And it's really, I've traveled the whole world. I'm blessed with the fact that when I came out with my first English record in 97, 98, and got sent by Sony Music to do a two-year promotional tour, Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Philippines, Singapore, India, all of Europe, all of 65 countries in two years. And I got to see all kinds of races, all kinds of people. I was blessed to be able to meet such great people all over the world. So I think racism is just ignorance. I think it's pure ignorance of people that have never left their little towns yeah. and don't know how great, how big, and how incredible the whole world is. That's mm. how I feel. Now, when I tell you that I'm confused, it's because I came to this country when I was eight years old, nine years old, and I, I love where I live. I love the U.S. I love Miami. I love California. I love New York. I love the U.S. because I love the freedom. I love the fact that there's so much to do. There are so many great places, and I just love it. I love muscle cars. I, love, I just I love everything about the U.S. Now, I feel Spanish when it comes to my soccer, my football, but at the same time, I love American football. So I, I just feel like a worldwide type of guy because I love it all. And my last question, Julio, is Under the Covers is now out. What is it that you want to get out of this album as an individual, as an artist? And then what do you want the fans to get out of this album? How do you want them to see you? What do you want them to take away from this first, new gift that you've given them? First of all, I want to enjoy what I've done. I want people to know that this is the type of music that I've always been wanting to do, that I really grew into, and that there'll be a volume two and three and four, and that this music really truly makes me happy. I hope it makes people that, that listen to the record happy too, and chill and enjoy. Just before I wrap up here, here are three land tracks you might want to add to your playlist this weekend. Tormenta, Gorilas featuring Bad Bunny. Veneno, Silvestre y la Naranja. Tan básico, los rumberos. para decirte. Algo tan clásico, un poco básico, y me complico cuando es más fácil. Well, that's it for episode 177 of the Highly Relevant Podcast. A huge thanks to our guest, Julio Iglesias Jr., for joining me today. And if you enjoyed the conversation, don't forget to subscribe, share the show with a friend, and leave a review wherever you listen. You can connect with me on social media at Jack Rico or send an email at hello at showbizcafe.com with your thoughts and feedback on the show. And be sure to visit showbizcafe.com for a thoughtful analysis of what's happening in American Latino pop culture news today. I'm Jack Rico. See you next week on another episode of Highly Relevant.
Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited.